I wanted to do an adventure, but I didn't know it was going to be so hard. Do you speak English? Ruski. Uh, Ruski? Um, Skolka kilometer? Me, I'll be on the top of the kilometer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ladna. For the ones who don't know me, my name is Sierra, and I'm slow traveling in my van looking for the wildest and most beautiful landscapes in the world. <laughs> right now, I'm exploring Georgia, a country of contrast in huge mountains. So the guys in the big truck asked me if I wanted to jump in their truck so they could, they could take me some kilometers up the mountain but firstly, those guys didn't seem very, I don't know how to say well, they didn't speak my language, that's the first thing and secondly, I don't know, they didn't look like trusty people <laughs> I don't know how a trusty person should look like, but uh, they were not I don't know, I didn't feel comfortable <laughs> and then a 4x4 car passed by there were two guys inside and one of them I saw he had a jacket, the first ranger jacket and I thought, okay, that's a good sign um, they asked me if I wanted to jump in and I said, well, okay, second time they asked me I guess I should jump in now there are only 11 kilometers left which is not bad let's see <laughs> I only had less than half of the hike in front of me, but all the mud and snow was going to make my day one of the worst ones in my experience in Georgia. This was just the beginning of the disaster, but I was very motivated because I knew there was an incredible hut at the end of the path. I saw the bear footprints I was a little bit afraid because I thought I was going to see bears but it's not very excited because when I'm going outside I'm always looking for wildlife so I hope today from far away I mean I don't want to see them very close I followed the bears footprints for a little while until I reached the height of 2,000 meters at that point I was already exhausted I think today this is the time I felt my body was in its limit. I had to stop every 20 meters. The last two kilometers, it took me like three hours to finish because I felt my body was running out of energy and it was awful. I wanted to rush because it was getting late and late. And there are a lot of wild animals around and I was just a little bit afraid because it was getting so dark and at some point I thought, okay, that's it. It was very dark already and I thought that uh, I just wanted to quit but there was not that option at the level so I couldn't quit. And then once I felt the energy coming back to my body, I thought it was a, a good moment to continue the hike. It was left only one kilometer and I just couldn't finish. I even had to stop at the door of this cabin, like at the stairs coming up because I couldn't continue walking so even five meters was huge for me
getting warmer little by little but i'm getting warmer and i'm so hungry that i'm going to start eating right away and today i brought two because i knew i was going to exercise a lot and is what i did and i'm starving okay now we can talk I'm sure you're wondering why I wanted to do something like this and I don't know <laughs> being completely alone in the mountain has many advantages but also many disadvantages the thing is if something wrong happens that's it you cannot do anything else because there's not say no so I cannot contact anybody but the advantages of going along to the mountain are also many i researched even about um, this thing that is called cognitive dissonance and that's when a person for example me engages in an activity that is making me suffer in order to achieve the goal i think in my case um, it's about the goal of getting to know what's out there because I really love exploring. It's something I've been developing during the last years. I don't know, it's so cool. I feel like, um, well, actually I'm a scientist, but I feel like more like a real scientist, the ones that go to the Arctic to take samples or things like that. When I'm alone in the mountain, uh, there is something going on inside my, like, my chest. It's like a feeling like when you fall in love, for example, then you feel this kind of like butterflies in your stomach. Well, I feel that way. I don't know why. I freak out many times. It's not like I go to nature alone and things are easy and I feel fine. No, no I don't. Trust me, many times. Many, many times I feel afraid. And I'm all the time looking through the window to see if I can see wild animals which I'm excited but afraid to because if there is a bear, a bear could just open the door and get inside I guess they could do those things <sighs> so I don't know, it's complex uh, the things that you like to do but that you are afraid of you guys, I'm sure you, you have experienced that in some other ways or something that you enjoy doing but at the same time it's making you suffer so much now I have to go to sleep in this cabin. I have to turn off lights and wish that nothing is going to happen tonight because there are a lot of noises because of the snow. And that makes me feel a little bit agitated. <laughs> but I hope I can sleep well because tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow I have to hike again like 20 kilometers. That I'm going to get ready to bed. I hope I go to sleep. good morning or very good night because I had a visitor last night I woke up because uh, I heard so many noises and I knew it was an animal I just didn't know which animal I wanted to see which one was it in order to be scared or not so it was a mouse I was awake for like a couple of hours until I could finally fall asleep so I didn't sleep very well but now I'm going to get ready with my breakfast and while I'm preparing my breakfast I'm going to show you the cabin with daylight because it looks much more pretty This beautiful hut has an incredible amount of sunlight and the most important thing in the world a functional stove Also, it has space for over 15 persons with a private bedroom in addition, it has a second floor with two windows so that it makes you feel like camping in a dollhouse. This hut was possible thanks to the collaboration of many identities and hard workers. Thank you so much, Georgia, for sharing this with all the nature lovers. This is ready. So as you saw, I got into a car with two Georgian guys 
that I saw they were forest rangers. So Georgian people are kind of, I don't know how to explain, they're very curious. I thought maybe they are a little bit more like mm, serious, you know, because of the cold mainly. But they are like a mix because when I was in Turkey, the Turkish people were so nice, incredibly nice to us. But in Georgia, they have like a mix, you know, like they are nice, but serious. So they are something in the middle. But for now, I'm kind of happy with them. They are very helpful and, and nice, so good for them. <laughs> I'm sure this looks horrible in camera, but it's very good. This is the hardest moment of the hike, saying goodbye to this dream cabin and walking back 20 kilometers. But you know what? I love it. I love being in nature in any season. I love being alone, surrounded by forests and meadows. I love walking and sweating with the purpose of exploring what's out there. And I love sharing it with you. I hope to see you in my next adventure.